I can share. Okay, we're recording. All right, hey guys, welcome to our Dream Team Zoom. Um, tonight I have a topic that I specifically wanna dive into and I was just saying before I even hit the record button that this all came about because of something in my life and it's caused me in the last four or five days to like really try to dive in and learn more about it. And I don't know it well enough to teach it and I feel like Sandra Delbeck is maybe the one that told me this a long time ago. Somebody told me this. If you know something well enough to teach it, it means you actually know it. Like you've learned it, you, ha you have it. I don't necessarily have it yet. So this could go in a few different directions. Um, hopefully not too kajumbled, but we're gonna talk about ego tonight. And, and I'm gonna tell you that I have very quickly learned that my ego is 110% out of control, <laughs> which surprised me. Hopefully that surprised you too, but see, that's my ego talking anyway. So how this all came about, I was talking to a friend who has a business that ha that is struggling. The business has been struggling now. Um, I'm not sure how well it was doing prior to the pandemic, but definitely the pandemic has hit it hard. And um, just off and on over the last six months, I, you know, I will send messages or we'll have lunch or whatever. And I'll just, you know, how's it going? What are you thinking? And it's just a pure shutdown, like no conversation, like, no, it's fine. And finally, to the point where last week when I had a conversation, I was like, I was like, in, in my head, I'm like, okay, I'm not, not asking anymore. Like, I don't know how to get a conversation started because this person's ego is so wrapped up in the success of the business that they won't even talk about it. And I was, you know, in my head, I'm like, how are they going to ever move forward? Or how could they ever take advice from someone? Or, you know, like, I don't think that the person's a failure because their business is not doing well. I mean, it's freaking pandemic, but I was just like, gosh, their ego. So in my little way, I was like, I don't know. Anytime I have a topic or something, I like start Googling quotes to like help me. I feel like I'm not super good with words. Clearly you've all listened to my Zooms before. Um, so sometimes I like look for a quote. And so I was like looking up quotes about constructive criticism or like, um, I think, I think it was, I think I typed in ego or whatever. Because to me, like when somebody won't take your advice or listen to you, like, I feel like that's like egotistical. Like they, like they think so much of themselves and they think they know so much about everything that they're not going to listen to anybody else. Um, and that is my very, that was my original, very small knowledge of the word ego. Well, so thanks to the way Google and the, the interwebs work, because I had searched things about like a, a quotes about ego, all of a sudden, all these things about ego were popping up in my like my YouTube, some videos were popping up and I was like, oh, and I like clicked on a couple of them and it literally rocked my world <laughs> to the core because I started off my search about ego pissed, like annoyed because I was like, what a, what a jerk, like what a, you know, I'm trying to be a friend, blah, blah, blah. And the more I learned about ego, I have a really bad one, like a super bad ego. And I'm just being honest with you and I'm slightly embarrassed, slightly mortified, slightly not sure what to think about it all. But the more I started learning about ego, the more I was like, holy crap, this is some of my problem in life, <laughs> which um, sounds, you know, whatever. But we all have an ego, like clearly we all have an ego, but I grew up thinking that ego was just being stubborn and thick headed or that you thought too much of yourself. Like, I don't think that I walk around thinking a lot of myself but there's a lot of stuff wrapped up in ego that I clearly struggle with. So I always have to kind of start with like the definition of a word because I was like, well, wait, the more I read, I'm like, what does ego really mean? And I will tell you like the Webster definition is kind of weird, but I heard an amazing definition that like resonated in my mind. Anytime you think in your head or hear yourself in your head or hear yourself speak the word I, that's your ego talking. Anytime you say I, so I'm not good at this. I don't like this. I don't want to go here. I'm, I'm an ocean person. I'm a dog lover. Anytime you hear yourself say that, whether it's out loud or in your head, that's your ego talking. Your ego is basically the story, the narrative of your life and of your personality and of who you are that you have created. Here's the tricky part. Some of us start creating our narrative way back when. So take yourself all the way back to the day where you were like five 
and you're like, oh, you're at the zoo and you see a zebra and you're like, mom, that is such a neat, uh, mommy, I love the zebra. And your mom starts telling everybody that you're into wildlife and that you're into zebras. And the next thing you know, you have a zebra comforter and you grow up the zebra girl. And so you just like, think about it. Like this actually happens to people. So you have these poor kids who are like, have zebra everything. And now they're into something else, but they're like, oh yeah, I'm totally into zebras. Like I'm, zebras are my thing. Like I am the zebra girl because that's the narrative that they've learned. So same thing, case in point growing up, my sister was always the smart one. She still is. Um, and she was creative. And then I was um, like the athletic one, but I was also very creative, but I never realized that because we never talked about that. Like it would, if you were to like put my painting next to Heather's painting, yes, hers was probably more accurate as far as like what a painting should be, but my painting was still really good too. I actually ended up going to college for interior design. Like I made a career out of something artistic. My sister went to school for education. So it's just, it's, this is such a, like I said, this is a deep topic. I will never cover all of this in our short time together, nor am I qualified to really teach it. But I just, there are certain things that popped out to me that I see affect my business. And I know for a fact, it's going to affect yours too. So I'll try not to get into a ton of all the details because I don't even know that I could do it well. Um, but some of the things, like when you're thinking about your ego, your ego is typically false. So you have like your real self and your ego self and your ego is the, like I said, this is the story you tell about yourself. And it's so deep in your subconscious that you don't even know. I'm sure there are like, I can identify right away some shit I've been telling myself. That's probably not really me, but there's probably a lot of stuff I haven't even realized yet. That is not really me. It's just defensive or fear. So mainly someone's ego will come out when they are fearful or insecure um, or threatened. So I always grew up thinking that like the, the guy that would be bragging about being a football player back in the day, like what a big ego, right? Like you guys all, does, would you have thought that too? Like, oh, he's got such a big ego. He's always talking about football. Well, in reality, the most insecure people have the biggest egos. And I have a lot of freaking insecurities. And that's where I was like, well, shit, I've got a really big ego. <laughs> and everyone's going to have an ego. It's just a matter of recognizing it and trying to learn to control it, like simmer it down. So that to me was probably the biggest thing that blew my mind. Like when I thought of an ego, I thought of just an arrogant, uh, conceited, whatever you want to call it person. But in reality, your ego comes out when you're insecure. And I know we have talked about insecurity and fear a million times as a team. And that's why I was like, oh, holy crap. This is, this is the good stuff. Like, this is what I got led to for a reason, because a lot of this comes out in your ego. And if you start to recognize it, you can start to realize it and change it. So one of the first things that one of the videos I watched, the guy kept talking about was that to truly, um, where I wrote it down, hang on. Yeah. Okay. So like to truly love yourself, you have to be yourself. So you have to let go of your ego to truly love who you are, which can be very hard because a lot of us are insecure with who we truly are. And I'm going to cover some of those topics because if somebody came up to me four days ago and said, are you an, are you an insecure person? I'd be like, no. Right. I mean, would you, <laughs> I don't know. My world has literally been rocked. I, I mean, I, I feel like I'm a strong, powerful, independent woman, but I also know some of that shit is because I'm insecure of not being a strong, powerful, independent woman. So a lot, there's a lot more insecurities that run deep that will keep you from loving yourself totally. And if you can't truly love who you are because you don't truly know who you are, that's kind of the, that's the gap. And there's like studies and books and all kinds of stuff, like how to close the gap. And it's a lot of work, but I think it would be work, worth doing. Um, so anytime you're down on yourself, which if you've ever been down on yourself about anything at any time, your health, your wealth, your looks, your hat, whatever, right? That's your ego showing up. Instead of loving yourself for who you are and where you are in life, that's your ego showing up. Um, so here are some examples of ego. And I'm just going to kind of, we're already 10 minutes in and I haven't even really made a lot of sense yet, but um, anytime a person is defensive or reactive, that's their ego. So that was actually the story that started this whole thing. This person that anytime I would try to ask about business, they were very defensive and they were just shut down. And 
or, or they would like kind of snip and be like reactive. Um, and it's, and I knew in that moment that was them, but how often are you defensive in your business? The second someone puts anything on Facebook of negative about Thrive, my freaking hair stands up. <laughs> my blood pressure goes up. My hair stands up. I click on their profile. I want to know where they live. I want to know who they know. Like I go into full blown, like, are you freaking kidding me? How dare you say anything about my Thrive? That's my ego. Like I, that that's totally ego. So I, I own that one completely. Um, this kind of ties in with that, but always having to be right or proving that you're right. So how many times do we get a message and someone's like, it didn't work for me. And our, our first instinct is like, hell no, I'm gonna put you in a chat with six scientists and they're going to explain to you why you're a moron. And yes, it did work for you. Right. We don't come from a place of love. We're not like, oh, really? You tell me about it. Like, what do you mean? Like we are immediately defensive. And we are going to prove to this person, hell or high water, that we are right. Which, what does that do? Like, what did I just tell you about my friend that did not want to talk about business? I was like, okay, shutting down. We are not talking anymore. We're not going to have conversations. I'll call you and say hi, but I'm not going to get into your personal life because you don't want to share. It immediately closed me off. So what do you think that does to a customer when we start getting defensive and we have to like start proving them, we have to like do this and do that instead of like, you know, they say it all the time and I have said it too. And I think it's super cheesy, but loving where they're at, like love a person where they're at. That's what that means. You don't have to be defensive. You don't have to defend your product. You don't have to prove that your product is amazing. Just love that person where they're at. Like let tell your ego to chill out, have a seat, calm down and let this person be where they are. Um, being prideful or boastful in yourself versus others. So that's another one, like where I feel like growing up, like it, um, like we were taught not to brag, like that we were taught that would be conceited if we were to brag about, you know, having nice clothes or having a nice house or whatever. Um, and so there is a line between being humble, but there's also a line between bragging. So I think it's fine for someone to brag every blue moon about something. Because to me, that's more of like celebrating something. But when it's the person who's bragging all the time about themselves, I, 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 I'm wonderful. I did this. I got that, blah, blah, blah. Then that's when it becomes like your ego stepping in because it, again, it's a defense mechanism. So, and we do that in our business a lot. When you want to prove to your friends and family that you're the shit, when it comes to Lavelle, you're like, well, I have a car. I went on a trip. I got a bonus, <laughs> right? I mean, I do it. I, I, there, I have a couple of family members who still to this day don't think this is going to pan out still to this day. So I love to be like, guess where I just went? <laughs> but that's my ego. I'm better off to, I'm the opposite. It's so hard for me to brag. Well, I need to learn a little bit from you. <laughs> because, like I love to celebrate. I, I, so I will brag about my own stuff. Like I've straight up, I own it. I brag about it. I'm working on it. I didn't even know it was really a problem until the last few days but I love to celebrate other people. So if you feel yourself wanting to, to brag about your business, to prove that your business is right, to, you know, to defend that your business is the best one out there, refocus that and brag on someone else, brag on someone in your team, brag on someone who earned the trip that, you know, brag on someone who, you know, helped someone like, like celebrate someone else, take the, like literally pull, be humble and pull yourself out of that. And that's one way you can kind of do that. Um, only about myself, I can brag. Yeah, I know. Bra yeah, brag on your team for days, for sure. And it is easier to brag on other people. I just think it's tempting when you're trying to defend your business, when your ego is trying to, de to defend your business, you want to be like, well, you said I couldn't, you know, I'm, I'm the first one to tell you. If they tell you you can't do it, do it twice and take pictures. Like that is me. Like that's how I and everything I just have read would tell you that it's totally my ego, like not the best version of me. Um, revenge. Do you seek revenge? And I know it sounds weird because we're talking about vitamins, but do you seek revenge? Yes, we do. I get group messages all the time. Remember that girl who did the Thrive for two months and then disappeared? Well, now she's trying this other stuff. And just, yo, just you wait until that stuff, you know, makes her poop her brains out or whatever. Like, we're all like, oh, just you wait. Like, again, we're proving that we're right. So again, it's not coming from a place of, well, I hope that works better for you. 
love you where you are. So again, I'm not saying that you can't feel these emotions because clearly I feel them. I mean, I'm being way more honest with you than I probably am in a long time, but I'm not going to say it to a customer. I'm not going to put it out there. I'm not going to project that onto someone because that clearly would like send someone the other direction. And here's one, this is like, this should have probably been number one, but this is the one that I'll, I'll probably will hit the most at home with all of you. And at first you'll be like, no, I'm not like that at all. Um, possessiveness, possessing people, possessing things. Okay. I'm the first one to tell you, yes, I have a fancy car. I don't even know how it works because it's fancier than me. So I really like, I'm not big into my possessions, but I am very shamefully possessive about my people. Follow me here. Again, if someone were to go on Facebook or in my face and tell me that one of you on my team was X, Y, Z and saying something negative, oh my gosh, I'd probably lose my shit. I've actually lost my shit before. Um, but here's how it shows up in your business. That's my customer. That's my promoter. Do you hear yourself? That's my customer. Don't, I, you, I, don't, I don't need help with my customer. I know my customer. I know what my customer likes and doesn't like. My customer won't like that. My customer doesn't want to get on the phone. My customer doesn't like grape. I don't know, I'm making shit up. Like we're very possessive of our people instead of, again, coming from a place of love and trying to get them all the help they need. We're quick to be like, well, don't, don't talk to my customer. Don't talk to my client or that would be me at work. Um, and then when it comes to like your team members, well, why is she talking to her? She's on my team. We don't need help from this other team. We don't, we don't need to decide. She's taken away from my team. She's taken away from my people. So it's like, it's literally possessing and it may not feel like it, but when you point it out, it's being very possessive of your people. You cannot possess, you can't own a human. <laughs> it's illegal. <laughs> um, you can't own a, a person like you could an object, but even an object in the grand scheme of things, if you die tomorrow, the object's still here and you're not. So you really truly don't own the object. It's just an object here on earth that you happen to be in the presence of. So it's the same with the people. If you allow people to grow and come in and come out and meld where they belong versus trying to control them and keep them, um, you're gonna do a whole lot better. Uh, just, and just like how you can't own a person and possess that person, you cannot possess a person's actions or situation. So when somebody's making a negative comment or when somebody's like, eh, screw it, I'm leaving, I don't wanna promote anymore. You can't, you can't possess them, you can't make them stay. You can't say, well, you're not allowed or whatever. Like you cannot control the situation. So the sooner you, well, so in that case, like when you're trying to talk to a customer and you're like, why aren't they ordering? <laughs> I gave them a promo, I gave it a deadline. My God, I offered them a free day. Why aren't they ordering? You cannot control that situation. You cannot control that person. You don't own them. You can't control their decisions. So the time that you spend going through that whole scenario of like ah, checking my messages, they still haven't ordered. That is a waste of your time. That's your ego chasing something, trying to control something when in reality, you're not in control of that. And I'm guilty of that. I'm super guilty of refreshing the cloud to be like, she ordered yet? She ordered yet? <laughs> she said she was going to order. <laughs> Um, oh, here's a, here's, here's one, uh, your ego. Anytime you hear yourself talking gossip about someone else, that is your insecurity showing up and that is your ego. And this is such a hard one for me. I'm a chatty Kathy. I love to tell stories. And sometimes I'll be literally in the middle of a story when I, well, you guys have all seen it. I'll be on the dag on zoom and someone will send me a private message and I read it out loud. I'll be in the middle of a story and be like, oh my gosh. That probably wasn't supposed to be talked like, I don't know. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to work better. I'm going to be work harder on that. But again, some of that, like, you know, if you're gossiping about, well, so-and-so said this and so-and-so said that that's insecurity. And anytime you're feeling insecurity, that is your ego. That's when you have to stop and be like, why do I? So, okay. Case in point, <laughs> I actually got some screenshots last night, Sandra Dilbeck, I'm going to include you. So I got some screenshots last night and immediately in my head, I was like, oh, wait till Sandra sees these. And then I was like, no self. Thank God I had done the work, right? No self. A, it will distract Sandra. B, why am I even taking the time to worry about this person and this stuff that they did? Because it doesn't even affect me. It was literally just going to be gossip. Because, you know, we both live in the same town and all that stuff. So... 
like you have to stop yourself and pull back and be like, you know what? It's not really a good use of my time to share or to talk about this person or the stuff they've gone through or what they're doing or whatever, because I can't control it. It's none of my business. I don't need to be involved. But oftentimes we will find ourselves talking about other people because that's our insecurity. Um, personal appearances. This is one that I, again, struggle with, especially in this business, because I know a lot of times people are like, well, this is a health and wellness company. So I have to, you know, my pictures, I have to put a filter on, or I have to, um, I am guilty of this one. <laughs> and I don't know where it comes from. Part of this is my upbringing. Well, like if I get up super, super early, like I'll put the time on my story. Like, yeah, bitches, I got up before you did. Okay. That does not make me a better person. It, that does not in any way, shape or form make me a better person. I will go to bed hours before Sonia does and she will be up minutes after me. So why? Like, what, what is that appearance that I'm putting on Facebook? Why do I think that getting up earlier makes me better? It doesn't. Um, and, you know, like, well, I, I, I'm in health and wellness, so I've always got to feel good. I've always got to be healthy. I've always got to have that image. No, you don't. Health and wellness means you're dealing with a human body. There is no human body that is always healthy ever. So it's basically your insecurities with your, your flaws, whatever you think your flaws are. So if you wake up with a zit and you're like, oh my God, I sell skincare. I cannot post this. I've got to, I got to, what is the, what's that called? <laughs> I don't know. Fix the picture, whatever you call that. I got to fix the picture. I got to put a filter on it. Like I can't, no, it's okay. It's okay. That's your ego telling you. Yeah, it does let your dad know <laughs> that I'm up. Um, it's your ego telling you that you have to be perfect or that you have to compete with these other people. You really truly don't. You just need to be you. Um, I know I personally, am, I, I've, and I've said this before, I am so drawn to people who are honest about who they are and what they look like and that maybe they've got a little bit of a tummy and that maybe their legs aren't perfectly smooth. But yet when I go to post a picture, it makes me want to vomit if I'm going to put a picture out like that. And that is just my ego. That's me not wanting to admit that I'm not perfect. <laughs> Clearly you all know that now, um, but that's my ego talking and I need to let that go. And same with you. If you're, if you're like, no one's going to buy uh, vitamins for me because I'm not a size two. Well, guess what? There's a whole lot of people in this world that are not a size two and they will never be a size two. And they do want to buy, buy vitamins from you. Um, if you're like, well, no one's going to want to buy vitamins or believe I'm healthy because I have this autoimmune disorder or whatever. And so some days I have to lay down and I can't move. Guess what? There's a shit ton of people that have the same problem and they would love to know that you have better, more better days than bad. And so again, you just have to be you, but you have to get over your ego to put it out there. Um, bullying is a version of being, that's like bullying is your ego showing up because again, if you're like bullying someone into things, which again, I'm guilty. <laughs> My God, I feel like I'm in confession. I am so guilty. I am guilty of like, pushing and pushing and pushing until I finally get someone to be like, yes, this is what we're going to do. <laughs> um, sometimes there are people who respond better to like direct pushing, but the majority of the world should be allowed to make their own decisions, right? So if you're bullying people into to ordering a product or to signing up for your team, or you're bullying someone on your team to place an order for something or do a promo, if you can bully people, but not forever. So if you're finding success in your business from bullying people, just know it will be short-lived. Like that's, that's just how that works. Um, I can think of probably five promoters on my team that I kind of sort of bullied into it. And I don't know why I say kind of sort of, I guess to make me sound better. I bullied them into it and they don't promote. So why did that do me any good? Right? Like that was just my ego. Like I wanted to prove to them that they needed to do this because it was going to be so amazing because it's the best product ever. And I was going to prove to them that I was right. And now they don't even do anything. Um, probably another one of the absolute biggest things. Anytime you are looking for outside approval in someone else or an award from someone else, anytime you're looking for that and that's what's motivating you or that's what's getting you excited about an accomplishment, that's your ego. You need to love yourself so deeply just the way you are that if you, if you were to hit 12K this afternoon and no one even realized it till next week that you would be okay. If you are chasing a rank or chasing a bonus or, or chasing success with your business because you want to impress people or because you want people to be like, wow, she did it. 
if that's what's motivating you, your success will be very, very short term because that excitement and that affirmation from outside sources will come and go very quickly and they will move on to the next person that they want to clap for. And then you, you still got to be there. Um, is, are, is, am I resonating with anybody? Does anybody understand where I'm coming from? I need to look over here. So I can't tell people I get up at 4 30. You can tell people you get up at 4 30. You can tell them whatever you want, but you just have to ask yourself why you're doing it. Like, why are you saying I'm at the gym at 4 30? Is it because you're like, hey, if you're up at 4 30, come to the gym too? That's not what I was doing. I was like, look, bitches, I take Thrive and I get up at 4 15 and I'm fine. That was my app. That I'm being honest. That's my attitude behind that post. Uh, I'm up at 4 15 with the dog. I won't whine about it because I'm going to take my Thrive and I'm going to be up all night long. So in your face. That's where it was coming from. If you're coming from, if I was like, hey, it's 4.15, would anyone like to talk? Is anyone else awake because their dog's an asshole? Let's get on the phone. That's completely different, but that's not where I was coming from. So if you're, if you're saying you're at the gym at 4.30 because you think that makes you a better person, you got to ask yourself why you think that makes you a better person. Why would, you, why would working out at 4.30 in the morning be any better than somebody working out at 4.30 at night? I'm a trainer. I can tell you it's not. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it just, it depends on where the motivation is coming from. Um, okay. I'm going to run out of time here. I said, approval. Uh, da, 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 da. If you're offended by criticism of any kind, that's your ego, not you. If you're stuck in the past, uh, oh, here's one. This is going to get all of you. Cause it got me, all of these have got me clearly. Uh, you know, people who constantly apologize yet they do the same thing. That's their ego. By the way, that's your ego. If you have ever said to yourself or your leader, yeah, I didn't get my reach outs done, but I'm gonna get them done tomorrow. I didn't get that live done, but I'm gonna get it next week. And the next week comes. I didn't get it done, I got really busy, but I'm so sorry, but I'm gonna get it done. That is your ego making up for your lack of activity. And guess what? It's your ego screwing yourself. You're apologizing over and over and over to maybe your leader but your leader doesn't care because they have to do their own stuff. So if you're apologizing for a behavior over and over and over, but you keep doing the behavior, that's your ego. Um, I'm guilty of like, oh my gosh, I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat so good today. Oh crap. Okay. Sorry. I'll be better tomorrow. I'm going to do it better tomorrow. Oh crap. Uh, I'm going to better tomorrow. Okay. Who, who am I talking to myself? I'm lying to myself. Right? So if you're lying to yourself about your activity, get honest with yourself, like stop, apologizing for something that you're just going to keep doing. Like, why are you doing it? Like, figure that out. Um, la, la, la. Okay. Something else, just a couple other things that I found very interesting that won't really go in order, but I definitely want to share them with you. Um, one of the, it was a Ted talk actually that I listened to. It was a coach. He was a tennis coach and he was talking about the difference between ego um, and like your best self when you play to win, that's your best self. When you play not to lose, that's your ego. And I want you to think about that because that one cut me like a knife. So his example was a tennis player who basically sucked when she came to him, but he taught her what she had to do every single day to improve her skills. And so every single day through the mundane, she did what had to be done to, to improve her skills. So it took a while because she didn't actually have like the natural talent of some of the players that he had, but she had the gumption, I guess would be my word to, to make herself better. So it was like 1% every day she got better because she went through the motions and then all the way, finally, she ended up playing in the Olympics and all during the Olympics, she was doing great because she was just doing the do i'll use words that make sense now to our business she was just doing the do through all the games not thinking about anything she was playing to win and then it got to where i don't know all the rules in tennis but it got to where like if she won the next one she would have won the whole thing but if she lost they would still have one more to go and she got in her head and was like oh my gosh i might actually win this and she switched from playing to win to playing not to lose and she lost track of doing the do. And how often do we do that? We, we preach about the five, four, three, two, one all the time. It's not exciting. It's not fun. What's fun is being like, I earned a trip. 
I got a car. Like that's the fun shit. But the second you earn a car and you stop doing the five, four, three, two, one, you can kiss that car goodbye because now that you didn't lose, you got your shout out, but you're no longer playing to win. You're going to go backwards. Um, so one of the statistics that they were talking about was when you get into your business or your job and you're like, you know what? I got it. I figured it out. I know how to do this now. I've, I've put in all this time and effort and I, I know, again, I'll just use Lavelle stuff. I put in all this time and effort and I am finally an auto bonus earner. So then you start cutting back. You're not doing your five, four, you're not doing your, your whatever you do. You're not doing your daily tasks on the daily anymore because you're an auto bonus earner. <laughs> you have places to go and selfies to take with your fabulous new car. Well, when you start doing that, you won't really feel the pain right away because it takes anywhere from 90 to 120 days for poor results to appear. So dieting, you're dieting, you're doing great. You're losing all the weight. You're working out, you're drinking the water, you're doing all the things. You finally reach that milestone you wanted to get to and you slowly stop doing all the things or like, let's, you, you know, you go out for the weekend. You're like, you know what? I'm going to have pizza on Friday and I'm going to have ice cream on Saturday and Sunday I'm going to have biscuits and gravy, but it's okay. Cause I've reached my goal. Well, you won't be, you know, 30 pounds more on Monday morning, but if you keep doing that, eventually 90 to 120 days later, where are you going to be right back where you started? Because you got too cocky in my, that's my word, um, with your success, positive results from daily tasks can take six months to a year to show up. So that's the dog. So your ego will tell you, I'm doing, I'm doing all the stuff I'm supposed to do. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. It's going to prove you right, right? Your ego is going to be like, this is what I'm doing. I am perfect. I'm going to tell you till you're blue in the face. I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing and nothing is happening. That's your ego talking. Cause then your ego is like, you know what? Screw it. I quit. <laughs> this is too, I did all the things they said and I didn't get a car yet. So I quit. That's your ego. Your non-ego, your best self will be like, you know what? I get up and I really do every day what I'm supposed to do. And I didn't even realize it, but last week I, I earned my auto bonus because I was just doing all the things I'm supposed to do. Like task oriented versus success, not success. Cause you're, you're doing your task to get to the success. Let me see what word the guy used. I probably didn't write it down. Oh yeah. Task mindset versus outcome mindset. And that's the thing. It's so exciting to wrap. Like I do it too. I have my goal on my calendar. I have your guys's rank goals on my wall. That's the outcome goal. If I get to like, if I get really obsessed with, oh, Olivia is going to be 12 K Olivia is going to be 12 K. And I forget to be like, okay, Olivia, did you do 10 reach outs today? Have we done a live? Have we done? Like if, if I lose track of the tasks at hand, then the outcome goal is never going to happen. So if you keep yourself in the task and you let, and you just, that's the hard part. Like you start doing all the things and then your brain's like, or your ego is like, I did still a lot of work. I worked really hard Monday through Friday. I'm going to take the weekend off. Or I worked all morning. I'm going to take tonight off. Or I've already done eight group chats today. I'm going to let her do two group chats. Like soon as that starts to come in, that's when you're going to start to lose because that's your ego talking, thinking that you're too important or that you've worked too hard or you've done too many things. Whereas if you just focus on the daily repetitive work that has to be done, like the humble work, like the, the most easiest way to boil this down. Do you, and a lot of you are moms, so you might have this even in your own house. You'll have some people who will just pick up after themselves every single day, just a little bit every day. And so their house may not be immaculate, but a stranger could come to the door and enter the home and not be grossed out. Right. And then you're going to have people, <laughs> then you're going to have people who are like, I worked all week. I am so tired. I will, I will put that cup away tomorrow. I will put the laundry away. And then come like four or five days later, a stranger knocks at the door and you're like, oh my God, don't open the door. <laughs> the house is a mess. And so it's, it's again, it's the outcome is going to be like the people are both thinking about the, the final destination of a clean home. But because one is just focused on the outcome, like I'll get to the outcome later, I'll get to that goal later versus the one who's like, I'll just do little tasks every single day and they will eventually add up and I will get to my goal. That's how that works. That's where your ego can come into play. So I'm five minutes past my time. Um, I don't know if I have helped or hurt. Hopefully I have you thinking 
Um, Cause I know I think very differently now about my attitude about a lot of stuff. Um, I'm not going to change overnight. I'm not suddenly going to be like peace, light, and love. I'm still going to be like, do what they tell you. You can't take pictures. Um, but I, I now know I have a better understanding of where I'm at and what's holding me back and what could be holding me back. I know for sure I get very oriented mindset and goal mindset versus the task mindset. And there's another thing about humans that I will tell you really quick. I said I was done, but apparently I'm not. Um, our egos, our sub, our self-conscious or subconscious, whatever you want to call it. We as humans love to be correct. So this, this, oh, see, this is a whole other thing. This ties in with, you know, like sometimes we think Paul Gravett is a little crazy with his I ams. <laughs> well, you, you as a human will want to be correct all the time. So if you say I am fat, guess what? You're going to prove yourself right. And so if your ego is showing up and saying, no, you're right. You did all the work needed and you, you have the best product and it's not your fault that these people didn't know about it. That's your ego talking. Instead, if you could say, I am reaching out to 10 people a day. I am like, if you just break it down and you rewrite the story in your head and shut your ego up, which is really hard to do. Um, that's where you can really see a change in basically everything. I mean, can't you see how this would just across the board change your whole life? Like relationships with friends and family, um, the relationship you have with money, the relationship you have with success, with your body. Um, it's just so all encompassing. And so that's why I wanted to share it with you because whether you say you can or you can't, you're right. Absolutely. And it's so true. And we know that. And, and I know that, and I've preached that for years, but I still caught myself listening to my ego over that in, in not all cases, but in certain cases. So I just, um, I don't know, uh, like what happens in life is because you're allowing it to happen. You may even be producing it to happen because you will allow to happen in your life, what you believe you are worth and what you deserve. And so at the core of it all, it literally all goes back to learning to love yourself. So maybe the only affirmation you say for the next 30 days is I love myself just as I am. I don't have to prove myself to anyone. I don't have to change myself for anyone. I love myself the way I am. Then if you truly can get yourself to loving yourself, then you will know like you deserve more and you deserve all the things that you want and you can actually bring some change into life. So anyway, I could talk for hours, but I won't. Um, okay, that's it. I hope this was helpful. I hope that um, I will try to put some links to some of those videos. Oh, one of them. Where is Lee? Is Lisa Cook on here tonight? I don't see her. Well, Lisa, when you rewatch this, one of the best videos I saw was Ed Milet. Ed Milet is now Lisa's new boyfriend. She's got the hots for him now that I introduced everyone to him last week. Um, so yeah, so I'll, I'll put all that stuff in here, but just keep that in mind when you're talking to yourself. What are you saying to yourself? Like truly, really, honestly, what are you saying? Like tomorrow morning when I'm tempted to put the time I wake up, I'm going to remind myself, like, why? Why am I putting that on there? Is it because I want to start a club of people that meet at this time? Or is it because I think I'm better because I'm out of bed? So anyway, you guys are the best. Love you. See you next week. Bye.